the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers in the dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flames and arrows, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. And this actually leads into our next series, and I want to uh, kind of launch the series on prayer out of these verses right at the end there, praying in the Spirit, praying for one another, and uh, so that'll be tied to that next series as well. But I want to go back and, uh, and take this on a little bit. Of course, the armor of God, we understand that. I understand we need to be prepared for the battle that we're in. But before we get there, I, I want to spend today talking about this battle, this spiritual battle that we all face. And uh, I want to bring this to our attention today. Before we deal with how to handle the battle, I want to explain the battle a little bit. First thing we need to understand is this in the spiritual battle that we are in is who is our opponent? And uh, so we want to deal with this issue this morning a little bit. You'll see that the picture behind me, that was, that was me when I was in high school. <laughs> Maybe not. But I told Zach, find a spiritual warfare picture. And he said, this is it. And I said, all right. So, But as we talk about it, uh, we find out this is a very, very real thing. And we are in this spiritual battle. And it's not something that we just uh, deal with the day we get saved and we're in the battle's over. Now, obviously, we know the battle is over. Ultimately, Christ has already won the victory, and we want to put that in front of you this morning and help us understand this battle that we face. Now, how many of you are watching the playoffs of football, NFL? Yeah. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm, I can't. Okay, I shouldn't say it, but I have to. Go Packers. Okay, that's all I'm <laughs> 11 o'clock, the Packers start to play, and I will stay focused through my sermon, I can assure you. Because it's only a game. However, when the sermon's over, I'm going to find out what the score is. And, but the playoffs, what do they do? And, and if you watch the interviews, and, and not just the playoffs, but any team over the course of the year, what do they, they interview the guys, oh, you're looking forward to the Super Bowl. And what do they always say? We don't care about the Super Bowl. We care about this game this week. And once we win this game, then we think about the next game. And then we think about the next game. And so this week, our focus is whoever their opponent is, and that's the team they focus on, and they study them, and they learn them, and they learn the idiosyncrasies of that team, and they figure out the weak spots in that team, and, and how they can exploit the weak spots, and, and they spend the entire week preparing for that one team. They're not preparing for the Super Bowl today, they're playing, preparing for the team that they're going to play that next week, and so that focus is there, understanding their opponent. And if you, again, you, you listen to those, those guys in the interviews and the quarterbacks and the coaches and, well, what are you going to do this week? Well, we're going to work on this because uh, this team is really good at defense. And so we're going to figure out how to, how to cut some holes in their defense. And, and the focus is there. Why? Because they want to win the game. Obviously, they're out there not to just have fun. And although some of them are, and some of them are out there to hurt people, but anyway, that's <laughs> here or there. They're not out there just to have a great time. They are out there to win. And so they study their opponent in order to win the game. What about our MMA boys, our fighters that sit in the sound booth and that are part of our congregation? What are you guys doing? I've been around these guys when they're preparing for a fight, and I've been uh, listening to them, and they're watching video about their opponent. They figure out, okay, I'm going to fight this guy on this day. And then they begin to watch video, and they begin to say, okay, what is this guy's strengths? What are his Weaknesses. What are? Where is he best at? What does he always do when he when he comes out initially? Does he attack or does he wait for me to attack? And and they begin to study their opponent. Why? So they can win the match. So they can win the fight. And I want us to understand this. We have this thing we call 
the CIA in this country, Central Intelligence Agency. What's the point? Pur purpose or point? <laughs> Those are two different words. What's the point? What's the purpose of the Central Intelligence Agency? Intelligence. They're trying to learn what they can learn in order to help our government govern better, to help our military uh, be able to win the battles that they go into. All of those areas, they're out there collecting information about, really, about the opponent, about the things that they're dealing with. And it's a, a, a pretty big deal in our government. And so learning your opponent becomes so, so valuable in order to win the fight. And this morning I want to talk about the spiritual battle that we're in because, church, we need to understand our opponent. We need to understand what we're up against when we begin to get into this spiritual battle that we're all a part of every day of our lives. You know, the more you know about your opponent or your enemy, the better the chances are that you're going to win the battle. Now, verses 12 to 14 give us some insight into this opponent. How many of you have ever been mad at someone? Okay, the rest of you are liars. Okay, I just... <laughs> Well, there's moments in life where we think, what in the world? And, and this anger at somebody comes into us and gets to be a part of us. And we think we're up against this battle with our boss or we're up against the battle with our neighbor whose dogs never quit barking. And, and this battle's on and how can I make them stop barking? And sometimes we get caught in this mindset that the battle, the struggle that I have is against the pastor or the church board because I'm sitting in the pew and I don't agree with what they're doing. And so we've got this battle, this tension going on there or whoever. And, and so many times this, uh, this mindset of this battle, the opponent that I face is the person in front of me. My boss that won't give me a raise. It's this person that we deal with. But the scripture becomes very clear for us to understand in this spiritual battle church, it's not against a person. We have to understand that when we begin to get frustrated or we get, begin to get angry or we begin to deal with this emotion with somebody else, this scripture needs to come back to our mind. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against the people that sit before me, but it's against the principalities and the powers and the rulers of the dark world. And so I want us to understand the opponent that we face every day. Verses 12 to 14. Let's read it again. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Church, this is the battle that we face. This is the opponent that we are dealing with. Satan and his demons, Satan and those angels that he took from heaven with him when he rebelled and God kicked them out of heaven and they became this force of evil that we still reckon with today in our society and in our world and in our spiritual lives. Church, we are at war and the, the guys tried to get me to dress up in some camo and put on my outfit and bring Matt's AR-15 and come as this combat soldier and I, I thought seriously about it and, and uh, opted not to for this reason because that doesn't give us a very good picture of what really the battle is because we can't win this battle with an M16 or, or an AR-15 or an airplane flying over that's dropping a bomb. We can't win this spiritual battle with that mindset. And so I want to put us in this mindset of the spiritual battle we are in. Church, we are at war. There is a battle going on within each one of us and church, the stakes are high. The stakes are high. If we lose the spiritual battle, guess what? We lose our life. We lose eternity with Christ. And we instead spend eternity in hell. Because that's where Satan's trying to draw us to and draw him unto himself. And so church, the stakes are high. We cannot afford to lose. And your neighbor cannot afford to lose. And I want us to understand this. Your neighbor that doesn't know Christ is losing the spiritual battle. They're losing this battle within because they don't know Christ and haven't felt that redemption that Christ can bring. And so the battle is not being won on their behalf. And we need to think about that as we deal with people around us. And I love this, this life group that we're going to launch into because it's going to challenge us to evangelism. It's going to challenge us to 
present the gospel of Christ to those around us in much more than just words, in how we live and how we think and, and uh, 